Hello, my name is Chris Matthews, and within this video, I'm going to introduce Brunsky. Now, the summer of 2012 was an exciting time for us here at Atelier One. We were the structural engineers for the London Olympic opening ceremonies. Now, my particular responsibilities were a 6,500 square metre stage um, and stopping it swaying with 8,000 people all dancing in time to Paul McCartney's Hey Jude, and also supporting Glastonbury Tour on the Olympic Stadium. The view everybody remembers from that night were the flaming Olympic rings. Now, they were made possible by an aerial delivery system supported by cables above. Remember that because it will come in handy later. So, what next? Well, I have a confession to make. The day of the London Olympic opening ceremony, I was actually the workshop for Sochi. Sochi had big plans. They had an entire stadium for their ceremonies. This consisted of two arches with terracing on either side and an open roof. Now the problem is with the Winter Games is that it's far too cold for spectators and so it was decided that there should be a temporary roof over the centre of the stadium. This was great but what about the spectacular flying elements like we had in London? We couldn't have a cable net above that. So it was decided that we should install tracks across the temporary roof. Each of these tracks could support mobile winches. The next challenge was how to load scenic elements onto these mobile winches, and the answer was by installing a hangar on the north and south side of the stadium. So, we had nine tracks and a total of 3.8 kilometres. We had 81 winches. Each winch weighed 1.8 tonnes and could support 1.2 tonnes. The technical possibilities were amazing and the creative team were getting very excited. The problem was the Russian roof engineer wasn't quite so excited. He could foresee that putting all of these tracks and dynamic loads and lighting loads into his roof was loading the arches way beyond what he'd ever conceived when he first designed the stadium. He set us complex criteria for loads transmitted to the roof. We had to prove that these were never exceeded during the show. The huge advantage we had was that the entire show had to be animated for winch programming, giving us exact winch positions. I wrote a computer program, Vronsky, that took this data and checked the criteria for the entire show. The crucial point was that the information had to be displayed in a clear and concise manner. Everybody should be able to check the results, even if they didn't understand how the results were actually calculated. Now, an aerial delivery system supports scenic elements, like this rabbit. Using cables, here we have cables. The cables are connected to winches moving through the roof. So there are a number of different things you have to simulate. First of all, will the scenic element swing? Secondly, for Sochi, we had elements that were supported by more than one cable. As the cables went uphill, the load distribution between the cables changed, and this had to be modelled within Vronsky. Finally, all of these winches were moving across the roof, and if you had a sudden stop, your scenic element would shake and swing, and this would transmit additional horizontal loads to the roof. Now, within the core of Vronsky, I developed what I like to think of as a iterative relaxation technique that basically calculated all of the cable tensions for all of these different scenarios. And here's an example of it in action. I'd love to tell you about the work I did on the stage, including aircraft carrier style giant lifts, three 23 metre long majestic galloping horses, a dream boat complete with opera singer, and a 40 metre long by 15 metre high floating icebreaker, but I'm afraid I've run out of time. And so that's how I, Brodsky and Atelier One, enabled the Russian Olympic Opening Ceremony to go ahead. Thank you for listening.